So to recap, we are not using the test folder. How do you run the test in the test folder? Break like test, right? We're using our spec. So in your Rails project, if you do it, uh, you might use it at your company or in our class. Let's just all use this. Um, it's a, the most popular, right? Very mature. So now to recap, you add the RSpec gem file. You need to generate it first time only, right? When you add the gem. And we did this that we understand that there we now have a new generator. We understand that the we have the RSpec colon model, RSpec colon generator, Rails generator, RSpec colon user. If we realize that I want to test my user model, you can do the same for controller. Okay, next. So we just walk through the uh, how to test a model. Now we have view controllers and a few things. So let's go through which each one of them. How do we test controllers? And to show you the example first, so we understand how to test controllers, how to test views. And then we we'll do the walkthrough again. Let's see if we can understand this code. Similar to what we saw, right? Aspect.describe, name of the class. So what's the, what is the class if I have a, a block? What's the model that I use? Block. block, right? And then in each block, let's say, if I have one block, every day I have a new blog post. So let's call it a post model. And then restful. So we name the post controller Post controller, so you're testing it now. Uh, so describe it groups the test here right, into one. We're testing the index action. When you test a controller, what do we want to test? Response code. Huh? Render, Render view. Yeah, very good. So let's say if I go to post controller index action, I want to make sure. You're not rendering an edit view, edit.html.erb, right? I want to make sure you run render index. So how to do that? This test is so easy, right? It renders the index template. Get is when you perform the action. Go to this index action of the post, and then you expect the response to use the index um, template. What's the first one here? Has anyone learned about HTTP um, sort of uh, status number? 200 means Success. successful. If you log in and it kicks you out, what is it? 401, yes. If you uh, go to a page it's not there, what is it? The most popular number, 404. If you go to a page and it crashes, what is it? 500. If you go to a page and it, it crashes even before it reached your your rail server it just crashed at, at you know just get to server and some gateway and some some problem file of yeah five of three five of four so usually you see like a server error effect. if you set up PHP and all that that happens a lot Apache and Ginex so here obviously go to index I want this page to load 200 so how to test maybe if I go to this page and I'm not logged in, what the response code should be. Five, so you can do like, you know, to have status 401, right? If your code is written correctly, but a lot of time, this is actually a 301, or a 302 actually. Like, so it's a redirect. So 401 means, you know, you just stop there and say, boom, you don't have access. But a lot of time we want to make it nicer. We take you to login page. So you can do this in one line. Is it a code? You can do expect get index to go to to redirect to. That reads exactly like behavior. Of course, you can write get index first, and then expect what? Expect what? What's the word? Response. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, yeah. You can expect response. Great. So what about this one? If I want to make sure that I load all my posts when you early in your code, your index action. What, what is the line that you want to write in your controller? In index action. Post equal. Yeah, exactly. So to make this test pass, let me just uh, pull up an editor. Um, 
Oh, my editors are looking weird. So in here, so just do class post controller to make this test pass. This test, I'm saying load all of this. Let's make this test pass. Um, def index and post equals what? All. Now, what if you want to display only um, post from today? Right? So maybe you have a method called post today. Yeah? And maybe you write a test over here. You can create a post from one day ago and then a post from today. And then down here, you just say only match one. Does it make sense? Can you write that test now? I think we can, right? So, for example, let's just write that controller test real quick. Uh, but before I do that, I have to give you the uh, us access to edit it. So maybe how do I make it? Make sure that we can edit. Never mind. <laughs> we, all right. Whoa! Wow! It's automatic. So let's edit this. I can edit this post right now. So just copy and paste. Whoa. Sorry looking at one screen all right copy this usually you can copy the test don't try to make the test look too you know clean and um, too like you know it's okay to copy and make sure your test is easy to read don't try to be too clever loot from one file or another and you know as you become really good uh, sometimes you can uh, do more of that so for example here you can say created at one dot day dot ago right mm -hmm. And here, index should only load today's post, right? So this one default will be today, right? So what should it be down here? I know the syntax looks a little funny, but what should it match? You see how Ruby can, you can do two things on one line, <coughs> A comma B equals to B, C comma D. So you can do that in C too, so, right? Is that right? So of course I have to say up here, loads, Load only today's post. Only today's post into that. Sounds good, right? All right, let's start to understand what this line is. Assigns. So when you have a variable in this file, what do you call this file? Uh, not that. What do you call this uh, this guy on line three in Ruby? With the at sign. It's called an instance variable, right? If I don't have an ampersand here, then it's called a local variable. So if I use local, my view doesn't have access to it. So I need instance variable. Now, I when you put the value on the right, you mean assign the value to the instance variable, right? So that's called assigns. So with an S. So when you say assign here, it's just if you write at post, it doesn't work, right? Because that's in this code. So you want to say the instance variable post in the post controller. So, so you want to get that. It's this. It's okay, right? It's just a little bit of syntax. Now, match array. Can someone guess what it is? And match array. Why don't we do equal? Why don't I do, if I do it here, does it work? Of course I. Yes, it works here. If I do it up here, does it work? Maybe, maybe not. Because maybe I get post two, post one, in that order. So when you do array, you can, even if it loads post two first, post one here, it will be the same. So you use it quite often, you can use match array. And each of this is called an aspect matcher. So you can write your own matcher, then you call it custom matcher. But this is equal matcher, you use most of the time. If you use array, you use match array. If you want this to changes to include, then there's another matcher, but you just input, you make sure that it loads today. You can do that too. And then use it up down here, maybe that's, that's nice. Right? So that's another matcher. But of course, the point is for you to understand there are matchers, you can look it up. Right? Alright, so I think we know how to write a controller test. Notice it's very simple. It doesn't try to do too much because controller we you get this comment when you do homework don't do too much here and why do we test render 
does anyone know when does it fail? Right? Why do you test render? Because sometimes you actually have the word render here. If you like your melee, oh, I have a popular .html and I just render that. Or you like, I do today, I do that, I do this. Oh, your code looks great, it runs, but your test will fail. So then you have to change the behavior. You have to update the behavior of the app so it, it works correctly, right? Excellent. Next, let's look at the view specs. So again, this is quite similar. It doesn't, well, we don't have a class for the view. So we give it a string. What file does it test? App slash view slash event slash index dot html dot erb. So it, it knows that. Now here, if we read this, it said uh, what's not clear. I'm not going to explain it, but just let's look at this one first. Let's look at this this test. You want to test the show action of a, an event. Does it look okay? So view here you have to pretend that you already run the controller. So the first line is say, hey, controller already provides the view with at event, right? Which is that. Now view, do the work, render. Yeah? It's like controller call render at the end. When you don't see it, it means the default. Remember we, we already said that? In show, so let's say in events. Actually, here I have an say class events controller, real quick, right? Um, and I have def show. Uh, here event is event dot find by id, right? So find params id. In this case, I don't care about the params. I don't care about the request. I just care about having an event. So this guy gave me that, right? Next, how do we, what should the view look like? So in view, in app slash view slash events slash what? Uh, let's make it shorter. Uh, maybe that's, that's too, too big, uh, too small. Can you guys still see it? This one? Over here? Okay. So events index under oh no, show. Let's, let's test the show dot each. This, this file. What do you put in there when you do show? The first thing you do is display the huh? Display the event location. Yeah, maybe. You do, it, it should be very big, like, you know, stadium something. So maybe we do that in, they say here, we do event.name and then we do h2 event that location name or you can do that look venue remember that venue name ah we have that we just implemented that code so if you have this code and you have this test looks like it's going to work right so I have like pretend this is venue right we pretend this is like in our code actually we have to do more how do we do it in our code let's, let's make it bigger here in our view code, we have to do like, uh, it's more complicated. You have to put an event in here and then you have to do like, you know, event.new name Chicago, right? But it's the same idea. So I create a fake, a fake guy, event. And I say view render, I only test the logic of the view. So is it clearer now? This rendered here is the text of the file, rendered. The whole file. So what, what matcher are we using? It's a string matcher. Include. Right? You can even do, you know, maybe you can even do this, but your test will be easier to break and maybe it's not useful. Right? You don't want someone to change from H2 to H3 or something like that. Okay? So then, this one is okay, right? I can move on to the index view. Yes, please nod your head if it's okay to move. Okay, it will wake you up. All right, so renders, this is a little bit more complicated. On my view, usually on a view, you render event. Yeah, you have more than one event, right? So when you have the same code, what do we do? 
we do a partials. Yeah? So that's why we're going to test, hey, when you render the view, please render two events for me. So that's what we're testing. So we use that with this matcher. Again, expect to and then match matcher. This is a view string matcher, right? It would just make sure, oh, you have to call a render in there. So render partial event, count to. So you can look the syntax up. What's interesting here is this guy. Okay. So let's learn a little bit. So double. Okay. What's the word double? Like, does anyone know this word in English? Huh? Double is like double, like twice, right? But it has other meanings. Um, in this case, it has a meaning is like another copy. It's like double, right? But this copy is a stupid copy. Uh, it's not as good, so it's called a double. <laughs> so Jackie Chan, when he acts in a movie, right, he has a stunt double. Stunt is you do dangerous stuff, and your stunt double means you have a when sometimes you don't want to do it, you save your energy and the stunt double looks from far, looks like Jackie Chan, but in the movie, every, everyone thinks that's Jackie Chan. So that's a stunt double. He's even better than Jackie Chan because if Jackie Chan does it, he may die, right? Jackie Chan is a bad example because Jack, Jackie Chan actually does it. Uh, but you have like very good looking actors that always have double because they, you know, maybe singer, singing double in a movie. So same here, we learn about test. Test double is a concept that when you test an event, you may have other concepts. You could call it a double, but there are more names for it. So the generic term is like you can call all, any of these double, <laughs> but you can call it, if you don't really need to know what it is, it's a very dummy double, super dumb. It's called double. But if you know what, uh, you, you need to know the type of it, then you, it's, a, it's a type double. So it, it should behave more like a, an event. When I ask this double, what's your, uh, what's your name? It's say event. If you say dummy double, double, you say what's your name? Hmm? So in the same, in, in movies, it's the same thing. If you look at someone, a person on the street, that's like a double, but you don't need to know what the name is. So dummy objects are passed around, but not used, right? Fake, you use this the most in your test. You just fake objects. You didn't save the event when you do show, right? That's a fake one. That's not created. And then you can do like stop. Fake is you can still test how many events do I have? What's the location name? And stop here, and you can read more stuff, but basically you can forget about this. I'm not gonna explain. Um, but stop is like, I teach you to do one thing very well. I stop you that method. If someone asks you for event name, you have to return the event name. So I stop you the event name, okay? So with that, I will, um, and mock is more complicated, that is you get more complicated. Basically when you make your, you know, your, your, your double more and more clever, you, you run through like, you know, become spy, right? And you, you become mocks, and spy is when you actually know what's going on. Like, oh, someone is calling event name on me. I can do more things about it. So that's very confusing if I explain it. So let's look at this one. Double event. In this case, it's just, I create two fake events, okay? And if you call not class name on it, it will return a, a event. If you just do double in your test, if you don't care, listen, you just have two objects, nothing. You can even do better in test. You can do it even like here, double this, and then you do name and location, for example, right? I just put name, because we don't have location. Event one. And that's when you have a smarter, this has become a fake, right? Smarter and, and smarter test object. So it, then, you know, just don't worry about creating this. I can create event.new, event.new. It's really up to you. Some people prefer to make it very general so that your test can focus on doing one thing right, which is here to count the number of events and display it. It doesn't care what's in each event in this test. So if you don't care about, if you really don't want to learn about double, just do this in your code. It's exactly the same, it's no problem, right? Um, so there are many ways to do this, but <coughs> 
to explain this if you come across it. If you, you know, you, uh, someone asks you an interview question, you search for this test double, read this thing, and then ah, you become an expert. Uh, all right, so view is pretty much like that. And then let's do route. This is the part that we struggle when we start with Rails. But once you know, it's like opening your door and walk in, and it becomes really easy now. So routes, um, but let's, let's read this routes. Describe, now we, routes is, now I don't have a class here. Again, similar to views, right? So let's have a description. Routing to sign up page. So you can start your app by writing this. It's cool, it feels good. I learned how to write tests now. All right, let's write sign up. If I some user go to sign up, I just make a test that this has to go to users action and new users controller and new action. So imagine in our homework, we can write this one test and then you go and do your assignment. Boom, you get one point. Right? So that's, that's good. That's a good way to write. Maybe we should do our homework that way. So next, for example, you want to protect your app from going to users and display all the users. Oh, you tell me you have a million users, but I go to slash users and I see five users. So you don't want to show them that. Well, more like you don't want to show them the names and emails of people, right? So you say, let's not do this. So if someone comes and add it in your routes file, your routes file is going to be very big. So it's somewhere down there, resources, users. <laughs> and, and then it goes there. Right? So, but this code will become red. Right? It's an error. When you run it, ah, I know where to fix. So that's useful. Right? But can you write a, a routes test now? Expect, same with response thing, right? You get something. So this is the, in routes is simpler. You take the whole routes command here, right? You get the user send or get request to this path. You want it to route to, this is the route matchers. Right? One of the route matchers. This is another one. You only need to remember these two. Right? If you go there and take this two action controller. Cool, right? If I do this, uh, sign up, and if I do this, I pass in coupon code to school. What else can I test? Huh? Params, yeah? So here you can do coupon code to school. It's pretty cool, huh? Like that's that's a way for you to write your uh, your route test, and it's not very interesting. But we learned that tests should be really small, tiny, so you test in each things, right? All right. Has anyone written a helper before? When in the view, and your code looked like, oh, I can do a helper. It's uh, um, it's short. Make my code shorter. Remember, we have a helper for flash messages, huh? So I can write that for helper. So helper now, we actually know the name of the, the place where the method is in. Do we know it? Where do you put your helper file for, uh, your yeah, helper file, like flash messages, where do you put it? Great, you can actually test aspect.describe uh, application helper, right? This is the only thing that is without an S users and everything so type in Ruby you can do either like this look a little uglier so people like the error syntax but who here doesn't does not um, who here knows the difference um, I mean understand this 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 Ruby hash syntax do I understand it no right or, okay so it's a hash syntax so it's a, this is a key and it's a sim the key and the value. So there are two ways when you have a hash. I'm, I'm just gonna quickly because some of you are not do not understand yet. So if I have a hash, of course you can do it's a struct. So you can um, it's a structure. So you can do that, right? But it's the same as that one, right? So that's a hash. So let's say if I have this dictionary or hash or and I assign it to one, okay? So basically. But normally you see this more often, right? You use a symbol in Ruby. So the very small difference, but it's easy to, to, uh, to get used to the wrong one. 
if this one it just doesn't garbage collect this uh, the symbol it save it and with string uh, this create a new string every time so if you really think about memory like you know you shouldn't use a bazillion this because then they all stay in memory there. you can use but then if you do this it's faster right you just do colon the, this key is created one more time so if I do this now let's do this one so what should my uh, what will my hash look like uh -huh. So if you like JSON, it will look like this, right? But it's also the same as this. So in Ruby 1.9 onwards, they introduced this one. But this is the same. So when you use it, if it's a string, it's more difficult. huh? If you do this, then A is that. If you, if you do this, you cannot do this because it's not a symbol. It doesn't work. Okay, so now we know hash, a crash course on Ruby hash. Okay, great. So it's the same here. So I use this. You can see that these two are the same, except I don't have er here, right? So how do I test that function? We, it's a method, but describe uh, flash messages, right? Do so you test this method. So that's the idea. So let's look at this guy. Link to event. I want to create an event, uh, a link to an event. But if I write, the code is going to be really long. Link to mm, event dot location name, event dot date, and then after that you pass in the path to the event, and then class name and everything. What if you can put all of that in one function, and then you can just call link to event in the view? Right? Yeah? Okay. Not in? That's good. So if I have that method, I can test it. The only thing with the helper here are the the um, the helper test is that you see there's an, a, a, a sort of a global thing here. Helper. It's like um, context, but it loads your it create basically in this this like you know uh, environment and you, it loads the methods of events helper into it. This is not a class. This is a module. The way it works in the view is that your controller will include these module, application helper, this into the into one so you have can use the method. And uh, when you're at home you can read about class and module. A class you can do class dot new, a module you cannot. That's all that's the Difference, right? So here, let's test link to event, and you can see that <coughs> when I do link to event, I should have the name of the event. Maybe like that means Ruby Meetup, right? Who knows Japanese? Ruby Kaidi, you know? and then the date of event. So it seems like this test is, is straightforward, right? Create that, and you can write more of the helper one if you want to write a good library that includes a lot of nice helper format into Vietnamese currency. Ah, then you do like, you know, some money here and then you do like a thousand Vietnam dong as the match. Ah, there's another new matcher here. Match means the string, uh, this is regular expression. Yeah, it matches the, that, that thing get regular expression. I'm not sure why it's regular expression here, like it's not really necessary. All right, so these are unit tests, which are the model unit tests we did, and functional Test where controller is a functional test because we need to load like you know we use we use model in there. That's not unit. You're testing model and controller, but we want to keep it small. And you learn view view specs and routing specs. So there are even more types of tests when you do behavior driven. So that's when you can do something like this and tell me if it's not cool. You can say, I'm going to test the home page, and I go there. Let's pretend I have a user first. Actually, this is, right? And from the home page, I'm going to, this is quite silly. I don't know why, uh, why it's say home page there, but it's basically I go to visit home page, um, no, login page. When the page is loaded, you fill in the username. Isn't that cool? Like it can actually do all of that, fill in the password and then log in. So after you log in, then you say the page that log you in 
should say, hi, Jado. Right, so this is an integration test. Integration. What's integration? Combining everything, right? Integration. Uh, so, <coughs> with this one, we need an extra library, an additional library. It's called Capybara. You can use the uh, aspect syntax, but it's uglier. So I only show this one here, okay? Um, and this event thing is cool. We can actually start by doing this now in our project. I don't know if we have time. Uh, probably not. Uh, so we we'll start anyway. So let's see. Um, before we do that, I just point out that it's more important that you write your unit test. Model te unit tests are the most useful. Right? Everything else touches on the model a little bit. But the integration test, if you write, oh, spend so much time, home page, fill out, go check this button. And your designer come in, let's make this button into a link. And, this, and all of that is great. So obviously, Right, very fragile, right? When you test, you test your integration test, if it breaks, like my test now break, my integration, this one, login breaks. Can we tell what, where the problem is? Maybe it's you, validation. You add a new validation, <laughs> that this user cannot log in more than three times a day. <laughs> Fail. Uh, you add a, maybe your controller now, like, you know, does something funny, right? Login, maybe you change the route. So it can be any of these things, route, controller, Views, model. So that's very hard to write, right? But it's quite cool sometimes if you're really sure that's a very important page of your app and you want to show to your boss, hey, you know, I do that. And again, I, I say, you can take a screenshot. If you run this, if it fails, it will show, it stores a screenshot. And then when you look at your screenshot, oh, validation error. Please change your password. Your password has been used, you know, by someone else today, right? So. All right, so we know that that's why we, we make tests small and integration tests is limited. Maybe Charles and I write integration tests to test your homework. That's a very good way to make sure you do it correctly. All right, let's do a walkthrough. We have 15 minutes. All right, let's do a walkthrough. And we're going to write one test for each. All right, let's do this. If I go to event slash Britney Spears, this one, it, sh it should take me to the, the right place. Right, to show me the event. I'll just, all right, localhost. Excellent. So that's, hey, that looks good, right? You, uh, we, we're going to write test for this one. So, actually, I haven't, so we'll see. Rails generate, aspect, maybe routing? Uh, it doesn't have that. Oh, routing, right? No. Say so maybe feature view. Okay, I'll just create one. Make dear. Uh, spec slash routing folder. Hey, that pattern. So I'll just create a file. Maybe um, what do you what do you call it? What do you call this file? Um, go to view show show page. Right? Doesn't matter here. So show page now spec tell you that it's the file. So aspect load when you run it, it runs all the underscore spec files. Dot rb. Okay. Now, I'm going to cheat by copying. Actually, I haven't done this before, so hopefully this code will work. All right, so we'll do this. Um, we'll paste this in here. Oh, set. We'll paste this code in here, require Rails helper, and let's make sure describe routing to event page. Um, I don't need. The, the website so okay routing to event page let's help me write here routes what do we need to do in here routes events slash one Britney Spears to events show right cool how do we do it expect where events slash Britney Spears to route to what controller events, events controller Action show, and that's it. Let's try to run this. Oh, it tell me that there's a, I missed an end here, right? Okay, good. Uh, not there, but here. Okay, let's try to run this. Make it smaller. Aspect, spec, routing folder. 
All right, what's the error? Let's just keep this down here so we can see the error. All right, let's look at the error. Expect it to go there, but oh, I need an ID. So my, my route test is uh, not bad, huh? I mean, it, now I get a, so that's easy. Basically, ID to be what? Uh, let's do this. ID is one Britney Spears. Pass. You know why my test pass? Because I have a line in resources event. If I comment this out, see, you don't have to go to the browser, right? You have your test running in the background. Say, hey, it fails. You can set it up like that. So let's say failure, no routes matches. Awesome. I tested my route. That's a useful test. Let's do next. After I have my routes, where do I go next? After my routes, after Rails tell, we know what routes to go, it goes to con controller. So controller spec, let's say it loads the correct event, right? So I'm going to copy the code so it's faster, but um, let's go to controller. So now I need to generate that. Rail, um, Rails generate our spec controller. What controller test? Events, remember, plural, events controller. I have that now. So I go to events controller. That's the controller file. This is the test file. All right. Uh-oh, that's not the right file. It's under the test folder. That's not right. Under the spec folder. Let's open this. My uh, Vim doesn't know the right one. I should delete the spec test folder. I, should, I can now. All right, let's do this. It's clear, right? Now I need to do the describe. Does anyone know what I type in describe here? I need to go to what action? Go to what action? Show. Okay. What what should it do? Load the right correct event. Right? So basically you I'm passing one Britney Spear here. Britney Spears concert. That's okay, right? That looks like you're going to the show. Remember from route? You go in here. Action. Now let's test, expect, response to maybe what? Huh? Oh yeah, success. So be success, right? That's quite silly, be success. Is that the right name? I think in controller up here. Yeah, okay. All right, all right, let's see. If I run this test, I'll spec, spec, controller. Let's run that. Great, successful, but that's not good enough. Let's <coughs> test another one. Load the correct result. So I want, remember the assigned word? So first, I, let's create an event. Event.new, maybe here is when you do ID. Again, I can use hash, just two ways, right? You, know, you now know the, I can use ID like that, or can, I can use ID like this. So it's, um, it's shorter this way. So this event, ID will be one. Usually you cannot set the ID, so so we will we'll test differently. So event dot new um, name Britney Spears, right? Britney Spears. Okay. Um, now I need to make sure this saves. How do I get all the validation to save? Oh, that's going to be rough. So I'm just I'm just gonna make sure that I can save this guy. All right? Let's let's try this. It's a different kind of problem. All right. I make it crash. So you ask the question, we can actually test the exception. So let's, I'm going to make sure that this, this works. I can create the event. Let's see. Validation failed. I'm going to do that. Um, it say HTML cannot extend it, blah, blah, blah. So let's do that. Um, extended HTML description is like this is the biggest event of the year. And then next up, venue cannot be blank. Okay, venue. I'll just fake it. Venue dot, what? Uh, maybe venue dot new is fine. And then category, category dot new. What else? Um, what else? Starts at, so starts 
at one week from now. Okay? Let's try that again. The cool thing about the test is that you can create all this and when the test is done, data is gone. It's called cleaning up, right? It's in, uh, in Java, you probably learn set up and tear down. Set up, tear down. So in, in uh, our spec, you call this before and after. So you can put the code, you can create this event in here. Let's just do that. I create this event up here. Why do I do that? What do you think? Why? Because now I can do more than... I, it will run every time. It will run every time I run another test. So this is... Okay, this to be clear. This is actually the same as that. Before each test. If you really want to do before all, run once and then run all the tests, you can do that, but don't. It's, it's very hard to write good tests when you do something like that. So just, just do before do, right? Uh, and you understand that it's before each test. So I do this now uh, to be success. So maybe this, this now should be, um, I'll, have a, I'll have a different test. I think I just had a good test. Basically just say, should load you know, successfully, right? That's one, it's okay. But now let's, let's have a more interesting test. Expect, I want to test this guy. Assign event. Ooh. Oh, yes, thank you very much. You just, yeah, you guys didn't catch this. What are we testing? We're testing show. Uh oh. See, there's another bug in the test. Yeah? Yeah. What? Yeah, I, I don't know why we, we bought this test. We do it in that the response is successful. Yeah, we, no, because we, this, this test isn't good enough. Very good. So this is perfect. So if I, if I do this, um, if I have this test right now, remember when we learned this test, uh, the render template? This is when pretend earlier, if you didn't, I didn't know. So, you know, you, of course you can pass any params. You do this, but what, what do you do? Render template. What? Show. So you're like, yeah, <laughs> I'm testing show, right? So now if you run the uh, spec controller test, right? Oh, this is interesting now. It crashes even before that. Line seven. Where is it? Boom. We need to fix that first. What happens? It cannot find event with that ID. So let's let's go to the controller and let's make that one pass. Do you know how to make it pass? Let's, I'll just, I cheat, right? I'll just do two I. If I do two I, it will, it will find the event with ID one, right? But I've been using my event a few times. My test database now has like ID five in it, even though it already destroyed all the IDs. So how do I fix this? I have to make my, my test a little smarter. Is it okay? Is that okay? Do, we, do you accept that? So maybe... Why, why the black? Oh, it's just... Uh, oh. <laughs> yes, there's only one hash. Uh, so let's see, right? Only one. So I just, instead of one, that's what I want. It's the ID. Let's try. Great! Do you see one dot up there? Yeah. Boom! This is a good test. So I call the right action and this, this one works too. Oh, wait. What line is it? Line 20. Oh, render. Yeah, it's good. So this one passed, right? It loads the event find. If find cannot find it, it will crash. So that's 404. Active not found. It automatically becomes 404 on the user. That's a, it's a little different. It crashes, but active not found is a 404. So here, um, active record not found. Let's fix this one. All right, how do we do it? Uh, it's a vendor show, expect show. How do we fix this test? Fix the bug in the test. Index, right? Yeah. Bum, bum, I have two dots. Uh-oh. Oh, same problem. Yeah? 
so here you can be lazier you can just say you know maybe you can call this like you know event ID um, like you know you can call it something more interesting like maybe event uh, slug who knows what a slug is so slug is the name in the URL you when you go to an event like it actually write out the words of the event for example Britney Spears so I'll call it event slug at home you can read more about you know if you are curious you can find libraries that do slug uh, better than what we're doing so that's okay right let's see if we can get two dot two dot what line are we fixing next what test is failing 26 let's do that so I want the same guy I want the same you don't want to put this line in before block okay in any block you have to get this this guy that does the test even though it's the same so you expect this to do hmm all right you, you expect it to load this event and what is the value to be what maybe it should be equal to my event is that okay let's seem okay maybe I'll just make it one first I like seeing my test fail so that when it passed I'm like yes I did something right expected one did you see that the ID is crazy I don't know what happens so <laughs> but you see okay I, I need an event and then if I compare this event with me okay that passes in root rails if you compare two objects that are model instances they compare the ID so that's why it passes in Ruby any object has a thing called object ID that's like a unique identifier it's like, like rails make it hidden that's it doesn't use that that's why uh, there are different ways to compare so you use EQ don't use equal so if I do equal it say these two guys have to be exactly the same and of course it's not I load it a different time you see it compares by something else well you have one event this is sort of like you know, the signature of that event and then this is another one right so you can that's why it fails but sometimes you want that equal you don't want the EQ it depends on your need in this case I want to just compare the ID to make sure that I load the right event you can do the same thing you can do names that name but the idea here is if they are they have the same ID that should have the same property so with that we get to nine o'clock uh, we didn't get to write a view test so do you want to write one or should we go home Let's go home all right so I will release the uh, you know we, we, we will put these notes up there and uh, for you to, to read further um, but now you guys um, like pros now you know how to write tests yeah That's a summary we write routes, controller, and all of that, so that's cool. All right, thank you very much, guys. If you have questions, feel free to shoot up, and we.